C10 Talk, episode 191. Rob, Rodney, and Steven, Wheel Hub, Truck Hub, The Hub Crew, coming at you, C10 Nation. Hold on, here we go. When they told me they wanted to do 20 page features, I said, there's no way you're going to get 20 pages out of one car. That's nearly impossible. Well, we could do 40. On a Ken Dix truck, we could do 40. There's, there are that many good images, there are that many detailed shots. It actually becomes a burden as to what to whittle down to get it down to 20. It's pretty incredible. Damn, son. When it comes to upgrading your truck's gauges, look no further than Dakota Digital and their wide selection of direct fit instrument systems. Hit up dakotadigital.com for more information. If you're looking for aftermarket parts for your C10 truck, Pro Performance is your go-to source. They carry the top brands for wheels, brakes, suspension, and accessories. Check them out on the web at azproperformance.com. That's azproperformance.com. Vintage Air. Their SureFit kits are the best value and the most completely engineered AC systems you can install in your truck. The choice is obvious. VintageAir.com. C10 Nation, are you looking to upgrade your power plant? Are you thinking about going with an LS or an LT based motor? If you are, PSI Conversions is your go to for your wiring harness needs. PSIConversions.com forward slash C10 Talk. Let me tell you what Melbourne Post is packing right here. I've right, got 411 Posi Track out back, 750 double pumper, Edelbrock intake, scored over 30, 11 to 1 pop up pistons, turbojet, 390 horsepower. We're talking some fucking muscle. What does that do? Does that blow your mind? That just happened. Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. And now I have a chance to be the best, maybe the best in the world. My old man, he's a television repairman. Got this ultimate set of tools. I can fix it. I said I got 50 cents in that juice box, and all I can hear is your mouth flap. Did you hear that? Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. All right, all right, all right. Hopefully you guys had a good Tuesday. This is actually going to end up dropping on Wednesday. Sorry. Busy, busy, busy. But uh, this was a really fun episode, and uh, I think you're going to dig it. I'm not endorsed by Wheel Hub. I'm not endorsed by Truck Hub, okay? But I'm telling you, if you like rad rides, if you like awesome features, you need to subscribe to both Wheel Hub and uh, Truck Hub. And if you like Mustangs, Mustang Hub as well. Now, at the very end, Steven says that he's going to give 20% discount uh, for you, the listener, and you use code C10. Well, then I texted uh, Rob back and I said, hey, just confirm that that's C10, but it's going to be C10 Talk. C10 Talk will get you 20%. If it doesn't, try C10. If that doesn't work, email me and I'll get a hold of those guys. But... Or email them. But nonetheless, you're getting 20% off, and that's bitching. I need to cash in on that because uh, I'm a subscriber, and uh, I'm behind all these magazines, and we want to see them do well. I- I'll tell you this about Wheel Hub Truck Hub, okay, is it motivates me to want to be uh, a better builder. It motivates me to want to build something to to get into that magazine. It- it's really amazing. And, uh, and when you sit down and you look at it, you, you, it, it commands your time. It commands your respect. And the thing about it, I was kind of looking at the magazine the other day, is it's kind of like what we say with the trucks, how less is more and how that works. And you're not really changing what GM already gave you. It's the same thing. These guys are just taking what the builders have given them and they're taking awesome, amazing, rad ass photos, but they're not going crazy. They're not filling the pages full of garbage and ads and shit. And they're putting it in a magazine. You feel like you're flipping, you're missing like three pages. Like there's, it, the pages are so thick and the features are, well, you'll hear it. You'll hear the pot, listen to the pot and you'll hear what I think about truck hub, wheel hub and and the hub crew. All right. So, uh, I hope you enjoy it. I did. I had a fun time uh, sitting down with them and, uh, I appreciate their time. I'm also stoked for my boy, Mark Giambavo over at creative rod and custom. 
his crew, his wife, Heather, and, and what they do. They landed the premiere issue cover. Some guys get the Ken Diggett cover. Some guys get the uh, Mark Giambavo C-10 cover. Might have worked out. I got the C-10 cover. And uh, I don't think it's a surprise. Probably my favorite C-10. Thing's amazing. I love it. I love it. It's just it's an amazing build. So you can check out Mark's show. Uh, I'm trying to think how far back he was, but about a year ago. So Mark Giambavo, Creative Rod and Customs. Check it out. He landed the cover. Now, that's a customer's truck, of course, but uh, congrats to them, and I'm glad it finally got uh, got covered in a magazine. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. I've had a few people reach out to me about the uh, shit show, you know, and so I was dubbing that between Hoop1173 and Dave Rob Ken, DRC. Two weeks ago, they got into a social media spat about a truck that Dave had bought, and uh, I'm looking at my calendar on who to interview, and uh, Hoop is right there. He's coming up in like two weeks. I don't think he's coming on now. So I had reached out to him and said, hey, you know, you were going to be on, and he was, you know, uh, accepting of that. And then, you know, the shit show happened, and he is is probably not going to come on. I did get an email from him today. I haven't had time to read it. It looks like it's pretty long. I will go through it and paraphrase it. Uh, and explain, you know, what I can, but I'm not going to read it, you know, word for word right now because I haven't really taken the time to look at it because I've been busy. I also saw Dave Rob yesterday and uh, he doesn't seem, I think he's kind of over it as well. So that's where we're at. I did explain to Dave, my objective is not to get two dudes, you know, again, in a shit show arguing back and forth about what happened. My objective is as the host of C10 Talk, for you, the C10 Nation, is to look at what could be done different so that you don't get in that same predicament. That's really what it's about, protecting you, the buyer. I mean, seller too, I guess, but I don't know how you protect the seller from a buyer. It's, it's It just doesn't work that way. So we will have something. Uh, I've talked to Sam Castanova about doing his own little series, maybe a four part or a six part. And, and that's probably one of the topics is buying and or selling. Uh, I think the key for selling is making sure you're brutally honest. That's it's pretty hard to have any problems if you're brutally honest. It really is, right? I mean, you could drive away a truck, a car, whatever the hell it is, and the motor could take a shit two days later. That's just what can happen. Now, if you drive that car to the mechanic, that truck to the mechanic, and you have the mechanic do a 100-point check on it, do a compression test, and you know, and, and the motor takes a shit, that's on you. It, sometimes they're just going to take shits. That's just what happens. But rust and zero rust and how much rust and how much disclosure, that's the part where it gets a little hazy. So that is not completely dead. It might, the two dudes might be in the coffin, but the last nail isn't in there. So we'll see. Give them some time. And again, that's not my objective is to turn this into daytime TV reality. So that's not going to happen. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. I was recently on the Truck Show podcast. Uh, That is a fun time. It's a great time. Check it out. We do talk C10s, Lightning and Holman. They do a great job. Uh, Stoked to be back on with them. Thank you both for, you know, having me. And uh, for you, C10 Nation, check it out. The Truck Show Podcast. I think it's episode like 133. It was the the last one that dropped uh, Monday. So check, check, check it out. Uh, What's coming up? I am headed out to the PTTS this weekend. That's going to be, I'm flying into Tennessee, and then I'll be uh, working my way up to Bowling Green to Kentucky uh, to support Tricky Air Arnie and his first premier uh, inaugural pro touring truck shootout. Yeah, PTTS. I like to say it like that, but pro touring truck shootout. That's going to be this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I'm coming back. So I'll have coverage from that show next week. PTTS, tune in. What else do we have on the docket for shows? August 15th up in Idaho, you got the second annual Snake River Truck Show. That is, where the hell was that? He did write that down. That is in Shelly, Idaho. Shelly, Idaho, second annual Snake River Truck and Off-Road Show. I think he's thinking 250, maybe 300. So 
check that one out if you live up in the Idaho's. What else do we have? Uh, we have Battle in Bama. That's going to be September, the weekend. I think it's like the 4th and the 5th. Battle in Bama, 4th and 5th. Let me just look at that. Uh, it might actually be... No, the, you know what? They do Friday because they do their tacos. So that is going to be Friday the 4th and Saturday the 5th. I doubt they go Sunday. So September 4th, 5th, Mobile, Alabama, Battle in Bama. Check that one out if you're out there. LS Fest East, or just LS Fest, is going to be the following weekend. That's going to be the 11th, 12th, and 13th, and that is back in Bowling Green. That's going to be Holly's uh, Holly's deal there. They got a little bit of everything, and you can check out episode, what is it, like 190 I just dropped? I think that was the last one I dropped. Uh, that was with the boys over at uh, Level 7, Jesse Vaughn, and uh, Blake from Holly. So... That same weekend on Sunday, C10 Intervention, Auburn, California. Up in Auburn, NorCal, I think this is the third annual C10 Intervention coming at you. All right? So plenty to do. I'll probably get a hold of Dino, talk to him, but they did just post something. They did a video, him and Krista. I think it's on the Dino's Get Down uh, Instagram, and they're still going forward. So that's the plan. I've gotten some texts and some emails. Hey, what's going on with the Get Down? That is the plan. SEMA, I tell you what, the vibe I'm getting on SEMA is that it's not going to happen. But uh, I reached out. I've emailed those guys. We'll see if we get somebody back, and we'll have them on and We'll ask them, what's the plan? But right now, I'm hearing some rumors that some big companies are not going to go. And I think once that happens, I think more companies will follow suit. And we may not have a SEMA 2020, which sucks because SEMA is, is a good time. Even though it's crowded, it's busy, it's always a good time. And it's a good time to see all the peeps. So we'll see what happens with that. I'll keep you informed. But the get down, November 13th and 14th, 10-year anniversary Dino's doing the second day. It's still on. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. That's the plan. If you haven't heard about Truck Talk Media, that's uh, us adding more shows. So, you know, obviously we got the Granddaddy. We got C10 Talk. We got OBS Talk hosted by Mark and Travis over there on the uh, OBS docket. We also have added F100 Talk, which is going to be Solomon and Devin. And we are soon, we're right on the cusp of D100 Talk. And that's going to be uh, Slick and Umberto are going to be hosting that one. So if you got friends that are Dodge guys, send them over to D100 Talk Instagram. And uh, we should have those pods out soon. We'll, we're going to drop, I think, three when we drop the D100. We have uh, the F100 out. So you can check that one out for your for your Ford buddies. You probably don't have any. But, but if you did, Ford 100, F100 Talk. And then uh, obviously OBS Talk. No stranger to that. Pete Santini is up next. Holy shit, Pete Santini. I mean, from overhauling and uh, every rad paint job in 1980 to 1984 to 1996. Pete Santini, if it was a crew cab, if it was a dually, if it was a boat, if it was a rad ass OBS truck, Pete Santini's got his name somewhere on there. So he is tomorrow on OBS Talk, interviewed by the great Mark Oya. So check that one out on the uh, OBS format. Pete freaking Santini. Awesome job, Mark. Uh, I'm stoked about that one. Oh, oh, okay. Let's get into some reviews, and then I'm going to let you go and hang out with the uh, the hub crew. All right? Reviews, reviews, reviews. Thank you guys for doing this. You've heard it, you know, said a few times, almost every time, that uh, the reviews is a big thing. The shares, the love, and all that stuff is a, is a big deal. So please take the time, share the pod, love the pod, like the pod, tell your mama, your brother, your sister, your cousin, and then uh, leave us a little review. All right, we're jumping back to uh, the end of 19, and we've got OBS Gauge, five stars. Just started listening this week. Awesome stuff. Nothing like old truck talk. Finally, something for us guys to relate to. C10 and OBS guy myself, so love it. Keep it up. OBS Gauge, five stars. If I start, perfect. Thank you. Rad Podcast, five stars by TM19842. TM19842. Great content for everything C10 related. Highly recommend for any automotive enthusiast. Boom. Rad podcast. Five stars. Thank you, my brother. If I start, perfect. Thank you. One more. Love the show. Five stars by Dennis G357. Hmm. Wonder if that's his gun. I live 
vic- vicariously. Oh, shit. I live vicariously through Ronnie and all of his guests on their truck builds. Ooh, where are we going with this, Dennis? I'm looking for a C10 to build myself, and this pod keeps me focused and enthusiastic about classic cars and trucks. Keep up the great work, Ronnie. Five stars, Dennis. You can live vicariously through me anytime. If I just start, perfect. Thank you. You guys, thanks for doing that. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, you know, like the pod, listen to the pod, and your support. Remember to always support our sponsors. That's a big deal. You know whose commercials you hear on the pod. Please support them. You get the pod, support the sponsors. All right. Have a great week. I will be back with interviews from the PTTS inaugural Pro Touring Truck Shootout next week. Thank you again, Stephen, Rodney, and Rob. And don't forget, if you want to save 20%, Wheel Hub Truck Hub Mustang Hub, use that code C10Talk. All right, guys. Have a great week. Late. All right, all right, C10 Nation, coming at you, Truck Hub Magazine. Print is not dead, print is alive, and we're stoked to have these three here today. Stephen Kim, editor-publisher, Rob McGaffin, creative director, obviously a photographer as well, and Rodney Hutcherson, visual design chief. Welcome to C10 Talk. Thanks for taking time out of your day to uh, sit down with the C10 Nation. Thanks for having having us. Cool. Um, I guess kind of we'll go in order. Steven, tell us a little bit about who Steven is and uh, how you got involved with uh, these other guys. Well, I, uh, you know, always uh, grew up um, enjoying cars. You know, the, uh, the way I explained, I um, it didn't, my dad wasn't into cars. No one in my family was into cars. Didn't have an uncle that took me to the drag strip. It was just uh, when I was young, my only way of, uh, accessing cars or being exposed to them was through reading magazines. So until I was old enough to be able to mess around with the car for my own, you know, just consume, devour magazines, look at the, uh, read the tech stories, look at the track tests. And so that's kind of how I, I got into it. You know, the, um, you know, just decided at some point that, uh, you know, I had with all the time I spent, you know, consuming the magazines, I thought it'd be really fun to work for them someday. So I you know, went to school, uh, started interning at hot rod. I got a job there worked there for a few years and then uh, left that after a couple of years freelance for a long time. And that's how I met Robert. Uh, so we, I think the first place we started working together was at popular hot rodding. Uh, you know, Robert won the, uh, well, he'll, he'll tell you a little about, about this, but they had a photography contest every year. He won that. He started shooting a lot for them and all the other magazines. And before he knew it, he was shooting all the covers. So we got paired up a lot. I mean, I would, he'd go out, he'd shoot cars. Um, I get assigned to write the story. So that's how we started working together. And then, uh, you know, with the, uh, with everything that's happened in the publishing industry, you know, it, 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 at some point we decided we should probably get out ahead of this thing. And um, in a lot of ways, a lot, why we started Wheel Hub and eventually Truck Hub, a lot of it was self-preservation. I mean, some of it was, Yes, we wanted to, you know, I guess the primary reason was we wanted to, uh, basically it would, the magazine we always dreamed of seeing, that level of quality that we always thought should be in a magazine, we wanted to uh, create something that we'd enjoy and that our friends would enjoy. But, you know, beyond that, you know, we knew, I, I think without anyone wanting to acknowledge it, the writing was on the wall for a long time. No and pun so, intended. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, you know, we, I, mean, I don't, I'm not, I, I want to say it was maybe about five years ago. We first talked about doing our own magazine and then, uh, around 2017, you know, Robert started pushing for it pretty hard. And that's when we got really serious about doing it. So, um, and then, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we needed to find a, uh, a, a really good graphic designer to put it all together, and that's how we got picked, picked up with Rodney. Still and looking then, uh, a good one, but they have me. Well, let me let me kind of go back. You know, let's back it up just a tad. When you you kind of talk about when you were a kid, and and those magazines made an impression on you. And and I sure. think for me, I'm 46. I mean, I would go. I would. I mean, I would sit there at the supermarket, and honestly, I didn't mind going to the supermarket with my mom because. I was just, I used to sit down in the aisle 
And I mean, I can remember everything from Ninja magazines to uh, Mad TV, obviously every skateboarding BMX magazine that was out there. And for me, it was more of an off-road truck, you know, stuff that I would get into. What's a magazine, Stephen, as a young guy that you were, uh -huh. you know, really looking to maybe automotive and or not? Uh, well, on the automotive side, a uh, little bit of everything. I, I think from, uh, I think the interesting thing is if you're talking about a lot of the older generation, I mean, say guys in their 50s or 60s, you, you'll find a lot of diehard brand loyalists. It was the Ford guys, the Chevy guys, Mopar or no car kind of guys. But I, I think when you, what I've noticed is in, when you, you get down to guys anywhere in their 30s, 40s or whatnot, a lot of that brand loyalty really isn't there. It's a lot more common to like a little bit of everything. And that's kind of how I was. I mean, I, there were obviously the, the major, uh, the major three, like hot rod, car craft, popular hot rodding, always looked at those. And then on the Chevy side, always, always flipping through, uh, the super Chevy and Chevy high performance. But, uh, personally, I liked the, me personally, I liked a lot of the, uh, late model stuff and the, uh, in that genre, um, it was GM high tech performance and uh, muscle Mustangs and fast forwards. I guess for you know at, at that time, you know th those cars. Um, you know, I, I think when I look back at it, it's like the cars that were the, the kids had in high school. Whatever was big when I was in th those were the cars that I thought were really cool. So uh, you know between GM high tech performance and muscle Mustangs and five fast forwards and five O Mustang that covered you know, a, a lot of what I personally enjoyed. Isn't it funny how that recipe, we talked about it on the pod before, that recipe hasn't changed much in a long time where you think about, well, if it was cool when that guy was, you know, 15 or impressionable, 12 to 20, mm -hmm. then it's going to be cool when that same guy is 40 to 60 because maybe, you know, guy or girl, but it, uh, I look at it in fashion, you know, you're like, well, I was 12 and she was hot and she was 20. So then it's like, <laughs> Hey babe, could you do your hair? Like, um, this girl or whatever it is. And it keeps the world going around. So I think that that recipe, uh, I worry about it a little bit changing now that we have like millennials. And I don't, I don't mean that negatively. I mean, I have an 18 year old son now he's, I think like Gen Z or something like that. So he's not the millennial, but um, I wonder about that and how that cycle continues, whether it's Mustangs, whether it's Mopar, whatever it might be. Um, it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens next. Rob, what kind of give me your back, you know, because didn't you do like photography for, for, for products as well? Yeah, I started out, I, I grew up in Wisconsin. That's where I live now. So it's been, um, we could, we've proven that remote working can work for us, but um, I, my family moved around a lot when I was a kid. So my first real exposure to cars, I mean, I would draw cars and trucks and I'd build models as a kid. And I always played with cameras when I was about eight. When I was in fifth or sixth grade, we moved to Tucson, Arizona. And my dad ran a lumber yard there. And one of his friends at the lumber yard had a gas rail that he and his son ran. So the first year I lived there, I got to go to the Winter Nationals as a pit crew. So I met, you know, Shirley McDowney, Tom, Tom Perdome, Tom McEwen, Big Daddy Don Garlitz. And that really like put me over the edge. And then in the Tucson, there's a lot more off-road stuff going on. So a lot of people I knew had, um, I had one of my friends, his bigger brother had a, had a Baja bug that we used to bomb around in. And, um, and then when I got into high school, I got real serious about doing photography and that's what I wanted to do. So that's what I studied in school. I was an art major and I'm always into cars, always loved cars. And, um, when I graduated, I started working in Chicago in the, in the commercial district, in the commercial studios. So I was working, I did everything from food, fashion, product work, you know, just the basic product work. I ran a gift and collectible studio for a couple of years. Um, and I started, um, back in 2006, like Steven said, I, I entered a popular hot running contest. So I used to read hot rod and popular hot riding and super Chevy and Chevy High Performance, and and so when Popular Hot Riding had the photo contest, I entered the second year, because the first year you had to own the car too, and I didn't have a car. So when they announced the second year, I found a gentleman that I've seen his car at a local cruise night and talked to him, and we ended up photographing the car and I ended up winning. And then 
um, when I won, I sent the editor a nice letter, snail mail version. And um, one day when I was working in my studio, he called. So I shut the door to my studio and we started talking. I talked, I think I was on the phone for, for almost three hours. So did a couple of short assignments for him. And then um, the next, next winter, um, I went out to Las Vegas and met him for more parts of the strip. And kind of, he kind of put me through a little bit of boot camp and then kind of got acclimated to what they want and started going off from there. Um, and then shortly after that, I was, um, I was at SEMA and then they had another contest like the next year and I had to go and train another guy in, in Phoenix. And while I was there, I broke my foot. And so I had to come home and I wasn't able to work for the next four months. And that's how Steve and I started talking more and more. Uh, we talked on off and on, but um, since I was laid up and had nothing to do, we, we'd talk a lot and, um, and got to be friends that way. And then uh, fast forward to 2017, um, we, I was seeing a lot of change. I was getting kind of burnt out um, from what I was doing. And I really wanted to do something different. And um, Steven approached me a couple of years prior to that about Wheel Hub or that magazine at the time. We didn't know what it was yet. Um, and our biggest hurdle is we didn't have a designer because neither one of us can do that. And it was, we have too many hats as it is between the three of us that have to, there's a lot that has to go on. So I don't think I could have shouldered that workload. I know Steven couldn't have. So, um, it was nice. Uh, Stephen called me one day and said he had a chance. He had a, a chance meeting with Rodney, and they kind of hooked up from there. And I can let Rodney talk about that. But when, right when we were starting to put the test copy together, is when the whole discovery joint venture happened. And Stephen and I saw the writing on the wall at that point. We just knew it was a matter of time. So, like I said, we did our best to get out ahead of it. And um, yeah, I've. I've really enjoyed doing it myself, doing our own work and picking the cars, picking and choosing, because I love everything. I love trucks. I love off-road. I love hot rods. I love street cars, you know. So being able to expand and do more of um, more of that, because you know, shooting 69 Camaros all the time kind of gets old, so <laughs> having well, a little bit of variety. So I wonder, too, if that has to do with a guy that grew up all over. And like you said, you're here in Arizona, which is, you know, kind of the, still the Wild West. I'm sure 20 right. years plus ago, you, you, when you think about the demographic of where you, you know, where you are now, where you spent time, you get exposed to so many different things. And oh, I mean, yeah. people just like rad shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so my, neighbor, my neighbor had a little Datsun pickup that he was modifying. And, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't like super modified, but he, it was a, pretty much a stock truck and he did some paint work on it and he lowered it. And so I was exposed to that. There was a guy down the street from me um, that moved in. He was my age and his dad was a professional jet dragster driver. And they had the jet dragster sitting in the garage. And then, you know, it was just, I mean, I had that and I had another guy down the street that had a, um, one of those Conline, the flat nose Conline bands. Oh yeah, you know, it was just there was a lot of stuff everywhere, and dune buggies and Baja bugs and lifted trucks and a lot of a lot of C10s, square body stuff. My favorite was always the the um, step side lifted trucks. Always loved those. Yeah, kind of a desert rat if you think about you know especially right. Arizona in the 80s and the 90s. One thing you mentioned was kind of the discovery takeover, and I think I'm correct on this, but you correct me if I'm wrong. And just for the audience, is Discovery Motor Trend, Motor Trend 10, 10, you know, so the publications all kind of get consumed. And then is that kind of what you were alluding to? Well, no, the when I started, it was still um, actually when I started, it was Peterson. I think it still was Peterson back then. And I think it just it just went from Peterson to Source Interlink. And then um, and then they changed the name to 10, um, the Enthusiast Network. And then all the magazines at that point have already been under one roof from since the early days um, when I started. And then uh, Discovery came in and they did a joint venture. So they were in charge of all the content. So all the content was created. All the people that did created content went with Discovery and anybody related to actually producing the magazine was still at 10. And you know what happened from there. So. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And, so, and for the uh, audience, just to kind of refresh your memory, uh, it was really late 
2019 or 2020, right at the beginning, they shit can 19 magazines. Uh, yeah. Classic Trucks was one of them. Obviously, Trucking, which is in our community. I mean, the Hot Rod magazine, so many different magazines got cut. And uh, yeah, print media took a, took a big hit. Today, currently, um, I was just showing these guys, we, we've got, you know, four new magazines that are in our hand from some are periodically, you know, the builder's guide style. Obviously, we've got Truck Hub and that's what you guys are doing today. So I, I, I do think print media is still alive. And I think the audience and the subscribers rallied around what happened earlier in the year and 2019. And I assume COVID because everybody's sitting at home probably is enjoying that, that print. Hopefully for you guys, that's, that's been evident in what you're seeing out there. Rodney, these two guys get together and all of a sudden you get, you know, approached, uh, walk us through that and how you ended up part of the, uh, the three amigos here. I, I had no magazine experience whatsoever. Um, I was a custom painter for 25 years. So, uh, I, I painted on, some grade eight cars, some ISCA cars, power boats, a little bit of everything. And uh, long story short, um, ended up kind of getting, I was just fried. I'd been painting since I was in high school. I started painting actually in intermediate school. My dad's a master gunsmith and I started painting on competition rifles when I was in intermediate school. And anybody that paints for a living will tell you that it, it's a hard way to make a living. It's, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of physical work. Got tired of fire marshals and all the garbage that we have to deal with here in, in the county, you know. So um, I had gone to work for a friend of mine building uh, large scale trade show displays and doing a lot of design work and 3D modeling and, and stuff. And that ran its course for about 10 years. I decided to leave and do my own thing again. And it wasn't long after that that uh, Stephen contacted me about something else. And then on the, while we were at lunch, he throws a bunch of magazines down and says, you, you ever done anything like this? And I said, no. And uh, anyway, one thing led to another and uh, Wheel Hub was, was born, I guess. We did the prototype six, six months later, I guess it was, or yeah. Absolutely. It wasn't very long. We had the first issue on the ground. It was, it was crazy. And that doesn't, I mean, it may not sound like much, but you know, at the time, you know, we, we didn't have a name. We didn't have a format. We didn't have a, a font style. We didn't have, were you going to have three columns, two columns of text? Are you going to, well, we had nothing. I mean, literally nothing but a bunch of ideas and some pictures and, and uh, it, it's a lot of work to, to pile up in that short of a time to get to get one printed so um yeah well, to expand you know, on what he was saying you know he you know, obviously on the graphic design side we're starting from scratch um you know on the production side again we never produced a magazine before it would and the irony there is robert and i we'd been producing content for magazines for years and years and years but uh, as far as actually producing the physical product we we're clueless we had no idea how to do that so um you know, everything from just finding a place that could print what we wanted to print and bind it all up and to be able to uh, fulfill the orders, to do direct mailings, uh, actually setting up a business, getting our website and e-commerce and all that. So, I mean, we, we didn't know how to do any of that. So we were completely starting from scratch, um, both on the uh, production side, the, the graphic design side, um, and on the business side as well. So we have, there's pretty steep learning curve. There's a lot to figure out really fast. And uh, I want to say when we first, when I first talked to Ronnie, that it was probably around April, April or May. And then uh, uh, probably by June, we started putting the actual prototype together. And then about the following January of the next year is when we had the first issue out. So uh, it came together pretty quick. Um, and uh, you know, there is a, you know, Ronnie didn't get into it, but the backstory behind our first meeting was I'd never met him before. We, we worked him directly um, through a mutual friend named Jeff Cameron. He's got a shop out here in Houston, and Ronnie and Jeff have known each other for decades. And you know, Ronnie's painted on a bunch of his cars, um, and I was, so I was already familiar with his work. I'd seen his work 
Rodney done all the logos for Jeff for the shop and has always liked those as well. Uh, but the one time we, we worked together without actually meeting up was, uh, you know, Jeff wanted me to come out and do some product photography for him to put together a little brochure or a handout he wanted to take to a show, um, the good guy shows and, and autoramas and whatnot. So, um, so I went out there, took the pictures, wrote the text, and I asked, so who's going to put this all together? He said, oh, you know, Rodney can handle that. So I said, okay. Um, and so I sent the stuff over to Rodney, uh, and he did a pretty amazing job. I mean, it's, I, I was very, very impressed with, uh, and it's kind of funny when you think about it because it's just a, a little, I want to say six by nine two-sided handout. So, you know, we're, we're talking maybe a dozen or so images, but just based on how he laid that out, um, A, I can see the talent on the graphic design side, but equally as important, I can tell this was put together by a car guy. Just the way he put it together, the images he picked, the angles that he used, he knew what was relevant, what wasn't. So um, I'd kind of forgotten about that until we tried really hard to find, you know, Robert and I, to find an art director to put it together. and. Um, we struggled with that quite a bit because we, what we're essentially telling people is, Hey, we want, we want to do a car magazine that looks nothing like a car magazine. Like <laughs> we don't, we don't want to have a, you know, 70 something page pamphlet with four page articles. We want the 160, 170 pages, 20 page articles. So just so mainly so you can actually appreciate all the time and all the effort that goes into these builds that you're never gonna see um, the, in the way the cars have been presented for all these years. So, so one day I, just, I told Robert, you know what? I've worked with this guy Rodney before. Um, I'm pretty sure he's never done a magazine before, but I kind of saw that as a good thing because then you're not setting your ways. You got someone who's bringing a, a very fresh perspective on things. So um, yeah, so I called Rodney up, met him, met him for lunch, and then kind of explained the concept to him. And uh, what, what we were essentially going after was like, I told him, look, we don't, we want a car magazine that looks nothing like a car magazine. Um, and I gave him some examples and I, I brought him, I'm trying to remember what I brought him. Was it, easier um, to, was it easier to say, this is what we don't want than this is what we do want? A little bit of both. I mean, so I explained the concept to him and Ronnie, like, so his first response was, so you want a uh, Ikea catalog with cars in it. Um, and uh, which that was pretty funny. So quote, said, quote unquote, I said, not exactly, but I thought about it and said, you know what? This actually would be more like an Ikea catalog in the car magazine. So, and then Ronnie had suggested, you know what? You should go check out this magazine called, uh, uh, was it design trends, architectural trends. 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 Okay. Trends. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an architectural magazine, but it's, done in a very similar way to what you're describing. So I went out to Barnes and Noble, checked it out. So yeah, you're right. This is really similar to what we want. So that kind of gave him some direction. And, um, you know, beyond that, I, I can honestly say there isn't, I can't really think of any car magazine that we, that we tried to model wheel up after we were looking at, you know, fashion magazines, we, motorcycle magazines. Wheel up is really modeled. Yeah, I'm I'm really into modern architecture and uh, contemporary design. So, Wheel Hub is really based more on a on a hoity-doity uh, architectural magazine than it is a car magazine. And <clears throat> I've said it before. It, it's a it's kind of a, a interesting walk because you know you have you have a segment of, of population of the car guys that are used to a certain style. And, and and you could you could easy, very easily make wheel hub too aloof looking for that segment of and that's not a that's not a derogatory statement it's just there's a big difference between the average car magazine and a contemporary architectural magazine so the go, my goal was to bridge the gap between those two where an average car guy could look at it and enjoy it but also know that they're looking at something a little more upscale looking a little more fashionable than than is typically done that was the goal but don't i like what steven said don't you think that like in an architectural magazine i mean to me 
it's not whether it's hoity-toity, it's just that you see the craftsmanship. So it comes down to architecture and craftsmanship and that somebody's doing it in an automobile, metal, whatever it is, paint, and, and then the angles and the styling and the curves and the way that you guys do the lighting. And when you open up that book, you open it up, whether it's trans, architecture, automotive, as a human, as a man who you know does things with their hands and their design, you're like, damn this is like i mean this is exhilarating i mean i see this and it's it, it for my example to the listener when you were a kid and you were sitting in the in the supermarket that that kind of led you right when you let's just say when you're a teenager whenever you subscribe to a magazine you came in the mail back then before iphones and everything else we had going on in the world you would sit down and you would i mean i would go up through a whole thing well, that's how that's how Wheel Hub and Truck Hub is again and is in a current market. You're stopping what you're doing when that comes in. I mean, and if you don't stop what you're doing, you're gonna plan to take the time to give it uh, the 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 look, the read that that it deserves because that's what you guys have created. You literally forced us to do that in in a, in a really cool way. Think think about when you, when you think about modern design. <clears throat> So it, it's not about what's there, it's what about it, what isn't there. So you're doing the most visually with very few components, very few uh, items. And so I think that's why when you look at an architectural magazine, usually you're looking at contemporary architecture and everything is, is peeled away so that your eye, it may only be one page or one image on a page, but because there's no distractions around it, there's not ads around it, there aren't, you know, all these other ancillary things that are distracting you, you're focused on that one image on that page. And Wheel Hub isn't that simple. There's, there's obviously pages where there's four, five, six images on it. But because, there, because there's no ads in the middle of the articles, because there's not a, 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 a quarter page ad on the bottom of one page and an image on the top of the other. There, there are no distractions. So when you start on that article, you're simply looking at that automobile. One glamorous picture that Robert took after another, after another, after another. And that's, that's sort of the way I approached it. That and also early on, I thought, what would I want to see? You know, what did I always want to see when I was young, like you sit in the grocery store or especially in high school when I started working on cars and you, they would have a, a great lead picture of, of a vehicle and then a one by one picture of the interior or no picture of the taillight or a part of a picture of the wheel. I'm like, well, what does that look like? I, I didn't get, I didn't get to see that. And maybe I'll see the car at a show and get to, to, to uh, realize what that the rest of that puzzle was. But I want, when you finish looking at a car in Wheel Hub or in Truck Hub, um, I want you to, to know very well what that vehicle looks like. What, what is the, what's the front end look like, the back end, the tail light, the interior, the engine compartment, all those things that make that vehicle special. And those guys have spent all that time, like Steven said, I want you to be able to see all that. So when I lay stories out, that's my hope, at least. <laughs> My challenge, uh, you guys could individually probably all have your own episodes. I, I truly mean that. I, I think it's remarkable that you, Rodney, from the perspective of a 25-year painter, and then you somehow just become this, um, you know, trade show display guy. And it sounds like you really don't have a true background in graphic art, but now you're a design chief for, you know, a leading automotive publication. H how the hell does that happen? Uh, well, I went to, uh, I, have a, I have a degree in uh, visual communications, graphic design, but I, I, I went to high school. I was into hot rods in high school. Uh, I got out, didn't really know what to do, and I finally thought, well, I got to go to do some school to do something, so I got an art degree, but I went right back to hot rods. I went right back to painting graphics. It helped a lot. It helped my talents in that field <laughs> greatly as well, and then, you know, I'd, I'd I had been, I, I was very fortunate as a, as a young person because there was a mecca of hot rod activity in my area. Uh, Roy Pickford, <clears throat> which I don't know if you know the Pickford name, but he was friends with Boyd, with Chip, with John Butera. At one time when I was out of high school, I didn't know it at the time, the Vern Luce Coupe was 15, 20 minutes from my house. The little John Butera was 10 minutes from my house. 
some of Jamie Musselman's early hot rods that Boyd had built were right by my, I mean, there was a lot of activity. And so I, I knew that was the place I needed to hang out and, and, and uh, to hone my skills and my talents as a painter. But I always had some design work going on the side. I was doing renderings. I was doing little graphic design, logo design, different things. So the, the graphic part of it never left, but it wasn't what my career was focused on for, for many years later. I love the life part of, for all of you, how you do something for 20 years and you might, you might be, you know, your head's down, you're tired of painting, you're doing, um, you know, whatever it's production stuff, whatever it is you're doing. And then now it leads you all three to here to, you know, wheel hub, truck hub. And what I think is probably kind of a dream job, a dream career. It's, you know, Oh yeah. 80, 120 hours a week. Uh, we didn't know how to do a magazine, create a magazine. I think that probably helps you guys. But then to think that you guys have all, you know, those rivers ran here to this, to this spot. And that's, you know, that's the deeper part that I really enjoy about life. And then we all get to, we get the reward of, of the three of you finding one another. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a really cool thing and it's gotta be rewarding. Like for you, Rodney, it's like, Hey, I paint these cars. I do this. I do that. Uh, I, I write, I take pictures and then there is a reward when, when somebody picks that up, or I've got God. to think that some builder uh, is very rewarded and some owner when they get their build in a wheel hub and or truck hub magazine. I'd like to think so. The, the three of us are a, are a unique combination. I, I don't know. I don't know very many people that could do all of what is involved in truck hub and wheel hub. Uh, with this few of people. Hey guys, I've got Bobby from PSI, PSI Conversion on the phone looking at LS LT based motor swaps. Bobby, why should we choose PSI Conversion? Ronnie, our harnesses are made right here at home in the U.S. Our product lineup includes the early 90s Gen 2 LT motors, Gen 3, Gen 4 LS Vortec motors, and Gen 5 LT and LT4 packages. We have transmissions ranging from automatic 4, 6, 8 speeds, and soon to be released, our new 10 speed, in addition to all the manual options out there. Wow, you guys cover everything. How do you deal with intimidation factor when a customer is doing their first LS or LT swap? Great question, Ronnie. But the thing is, there's nothing that we haven't seen here in the LS and LT world. If you grab almost any motor out of a junkyard, you want to Frankenstein a build together or even supercharge it. Leave it to our sales team to help guide you along the way to the products that you need for your restoration. We have over 10 years of experience in the market, a tech department that is available to help troubleshoot and diagnose any issues or questions that you have along the way while installing your PSI products. Couple that with the staff that is going to be standing by our products with pride, made right here in the U.S. to a GM quality standard, our team is happy to get you wired up and fired up. And don't forget, guys, use code C10TALK and you'll save 5% off your order. PSIConversion.com. PSIConversion.com. You want to save 5%? Use code C10TALK at checkout. Thanks, Bobby. So you bought a C10 and you either had AC at one time or it wasn't even an option. Well, Vintage Air has the solution for you. Their SureFit kits are designed to place the evaporator and hoses behind the dash for a factory clean look. In most cases, the SureFit systems will be controlled by your stock dash controls using their exclusive cable converters. In some applications, a new factory look control panel is included with the kit. The SureFit systems provide full OEM style operations, including air conditioning, floor or vent heating, and a powerful defroster. To retain a true factory look, the AC Air exits through the factory dash louvers if originally equipped in your truck. The Gen 4 kit provides infinite just right temperature, air blending, and blower fan speed adjustments. The Vintage Air SureFit kits are the best value and the most completely engineered air conditioning system you can install in your C10. Add the fact that Vintage Air has been the most respected name in performance aftermarket climate control systems for 40 years. 40 years? Damn, son. The choice is obvious. VintageAir.com the, the three of us are a, are a unique combination. I, I don't know. I don't know very many people that could do all of what is involved in truck hub and wheel hub uh, with this few of people. 
it it really i mean you you look back i know they those uh Stephen and robert can tell you i, I never worked for a, a magazine a publishing company or any of that never i guess i never had a real job to be honest with you but anyway um <clears throat> you know there there were there were departments of people doing what each one of us do and so um you have to really take ownership of it and and there's a lot of there's a lot of tasks that go on people have really no idea how much work it is to produce that and to think that it's produced by three people essentially that's it it's it's a pretty amazing accomplishment i'm not i'm not saying that in a in a uh, pat on the back kind of way i'm just saying it's a lot of work and it's a very unique combination of skill sets that allows this to happen on this level when you guys were creating the vision uh, was there any, was there any problems? Was there like, you know, did it take a little bit of work to all get to the same recipe? Uh, I don't think so. Um, cause when we started at the beta, we, Steven and I, had, you know, gotten some photos together, of some previous shoots we did just to kind of get something out and just to show to people what we could do or what our idea was, because simply just talking about it, and without having a physical product, nobody's going to really get what we're going for. And, and when I first saw the first couple of layouts, I mean, I knew right away Rodney was the guy because I never had, I mean, when I shot for a bunch of other books, I always worried about image selections because a lot of times they'd, I'd have this killer image and it would get on the cutting room floor and they'd use one of my worst images for some reason. And I could never figure that out. And I I think I can count on, one hand how many times I've asked Rodney, hey, can you change it to this one? I mean, I don't have to worry about that at all. And um, like going on what he was talking about, the three of us, um, when we actually got the betas out and we started talking to different shops and stuff, I recall um, the conversation we had with Roadster Shop. And it was funny because at the beginning of the, beginning of the conversation, it was um, Jeremy, Phil, and Neil. And Neil asked to begin conversations like, so it's just three of you. And then we talked about the idea and what we wanted to do and, um, you know, talked about their support and all that. And then in a conversation, conversation, he's like, so it's just the three of you, right? So I think still people have a hard time believing that the three of us can pull that off. And um, like you said, you know, Steven's been kind of taking the reins at putting the business structure together. Um, and he's kind of taken the brunt of that load to keep Rodney and our, our creative juices going at all times. So um, I think I think it's a very good marriage in terms of the skill sets. So now you guys have some crossover as well, though. So do you think that that helps understand uh, one another from a photography, from a layout, and just understanding what like like are you to the point now where this marriage a few years into it? is okay i know what rodney's going to do and or i know what rob expects and steven's going to do this or something like that yeah, take- yeah i i think so uh, you know the uh what rodney kind of alluded to is if you were to pick up uh any of the magazines we grew up reading or a lot that are on the newsstand right now that have nothing to do with cars um you will see a lot of names there are in, there are enormous editorial staffs, sales staffs, um, production staffs to put these things all together. So um, between the three of us, we've got to wear all those hats. Um, and like you said, there is a lot of crossover. And but you're you are absolutely right because there is that crossover. It does help us understand what the other guys are doing a lot better. Um, you know, probably, you know, creatively, the, uh, um, you know, between the three of us, I, I, you know, Rodney is probably the most versatile. I mean, he's, he's the only guy um, who can uh, take Robert's images, um, lay out the story, and also write the story. I mean, I, I can, I can do two of the three. I, I can, there are a couple of times I've, I've done photo shoots for Wheel Hub, and I'll do the bulk of the writing, but I certainly can't lay it out. Um, so, yeah, and actually, here's a really good one. The um, George Poteet's 36 uh, Roadster that won AMBR in 2019. So Rodney wrote that story. He laid it out. He also painted on that car. So there were there's some items. Of, that, that's, um, it, 
that is uh, that's a kind of versatility you don't see very often. And uh, you know, he's you know, we all try to stay very humble, but uh, just to kind of put things in, in perspective, you know, we the art directors we had in mind who we tried to hire who we couldn't afford the some of these guys um, had been doing it for 30 years specifically car magazines and they're the best of the best at their trade within a couple issues you now Rodney was already at their level so um, it's and that's just not that's not just me saying this this is other people in the publishing industry who have been around a while who are telling me this so I'm not al not, I'm not alone in thinking this it's, it's very obvious to a lot of people but uh, yeah kind of going back to what, what he was saying it's um, you know I heard a uh, a great analogy by Steve Jobs talk about the Beatles he's like yeah individually they're all great musicians you know John Lennon Paul, Mac Paul McCartney Ringo they're all on their own they were great musicians but you put them together and they they weren't like four times better, like a hundred times better. And I, I'd like to think we get a little bit of that as well. Like individually, what, what each of us can do, it's only, it would have, it only got us so far and the potential was always you know, pretty, I don't want to say limited, but there's only so much you can do on your own. But you put the three of us together and all the, the way we complement each other, that's what you're seeing at Wheel Up. You know, it's definitely a team effort and it takes all of us um, contributing to uh to, to get it out there that's a great analogy did you um happen to recruit or seek out people and it just didn't work out and then once you guys started hitting the you know kicking butt they were like hey um <laughs> how do we get involved with this i really like this uh publication or i didn't think you could do it you did it and now i want to be on the team and you're like uh -uh. <laughs> no yeah it, actually that it, it it definitely that's that's come up quite a bit um it, it it can actually get pretty overwhelming the number of people who will flood your inbox and uh call you trying to get it, get on get in on the action that that being said i mean i've, I've never been petty enough to where hey just because you went poo poo on the idea before <laughs> you saw how um it was going to turn out that y'all get blacklisted. i mean anyone and everyone as long as uh, to me, it's pretty simple. It's it's all about what skills you bring to the table. How can you contribute to what we're doing to make it better? And as long as you can do that, then um, it's, it's fair game. I'm, I'm open to to working with uh, anyone and everyone. Cool. Well, like you kind of I alluded to earlier, it's things that happened 20 years ago are still paying off today, or it kind of works its way around. So that's a that's another kind of life thing. Um, with the success of Wheel Hub. I'm assuming you guys just, you know, you're looking at your content. There was, you know, going through Wheel Hub, there's trucks throughout. Um, and then eventually you guys put your heads together and uh, you said, hey, let's let's add another book. Let's, because you have the Mustang one, correct? So you have yes. Wheel yeah. Hub, Mustang Hub, and now Truck Hub. So guys that are really busy and now you're adding another monster, you know, now it's the three-headed monster. So. Walk us through that. What was the decision to put out another book? Uh, well, I'll start out, then I'm going to punt to Rodney and Robert after this. Um, what, when we started really seriously talking about it was in December when all the other magazines went away. I mean, from the very beginning, my, you know, the idea I had in my head was, look, Wheel Hub is, um, you know, we don't want to, from right out of the gate, try to do two or three or four or half a dozen of them because a lot of people have tried that I was like you know what instead of doing you know three or four or five that aren't very good let's do one that's good make sure it's good make sure it's successful and then after we've proven that out then let's you know think about doing another one so we talked about it on and off and but then like last december when um you know, the 19 magazines got killed is when we started seriously thinking about it. We, we didn't know quite like what category we'd move into. We'd thrown out a lot of different ideas. We talked about doing a Chevy magazine. We talked about doing a street rod and customs magazine. We talked about doing a uh, uh, Mustang magazine, which we did end up doing. But And we also talked about doing a magazine where you know, the cars are really nice, but maybe 
60, 70 percent as nice as what's in Wheel Lab. So we talked about all kinds of ideas. And out of the three of us, Rodney was a guy who really wanted to do a truck magazine. I mean, from the very beginning, I'll give, I'll give him credit for that. He's <laughs> the first guy that pitched it. Let's do a truck magazine. Um, so uh, as of late January, when we're in Pomona at the Roadster Show, we still hadn't decided what we wanted to do. And, um, you know, so we, we had some interesting discussions. Some of it got pretty heated, but that's just what happens. You know, you, you're passionate about what you're doing. You're going to butt heads every now and then. But it's okay. You just talk it out. We'll figure it out. So, um, you know, we all gave our reasons for why we could or should go one way or another. You know, Rodney made some very good points on the truck side, and that's ultimately what we decided to do. And so, um, yeah, I'll just punt to him at this point, kind of get, get uh, behind his thought process and why he wanted to move in that direction. So why were you so, um, you know, why did you want Truck Hub? Why, did you, what was, why were you behind the truck and the truck scene? Uh, there were, there were, well, there were several reasons. Uh, one, one really good business reason was I thought we ought to do something that was completely out of our lane. You know, a lot of other things that we could have done would, would have been a lot of crossover in, in what we're already doing. Uh, two, the truck market is smoking hot and has been, and I think it's going to be and get even bigger. And three, I'm just a truck guy. My first, I had a 80 model step size Chevy that I drove to high school that was slammed. I, I got it in 80, I'm gonna show my age, 80, 81, I got it. So 80, 82, I'm sorry, 82. I still have it. Um, and I'm, I've just always been a truck guy. And uh, two of my good friends in high school that I'm still friends with, one's a doctor, he's done a lot better than I have. Uh, he had a long wheelbase, uh, 70 model Chevrolet truck that was lowered with a wrap motor. I mean, I had just trucks around all the time. And uh, I just, I've never, never gotten over the whole truck thing. I just like them. Uh, I just infatuated with trucks. Kind of got away from it for a while, but I've always, I've always enjoyed them. One of my good friends, I'm, I'm sure you know who he is, is Ken McAvoy that has into trucks. Uh, oh, so. I know him. Yeah, yeah, I've known Ken for, my goodness, 20, 30 years now, I guess I've known Ken, over 30 years. So anyway, the trucks have always been around, and, and I've, I've just, uh, I thought that would be the best market for us to get into. I thought I could contribute more to that as well. But I wonder, because you know Ken, right? So Ken, to me, if I know Ken, then I know Keith Stevens. Keith Stevens is a guy, to me, who if I think of my top five guys that when I was, you know, getting into the C10 world, Keith Stevens is one of those guys. So uh, into billet for social media and, and Keith's really kind of dropped off lately. He doesn't, I mean, he does what he does. I, I love watching what he does, but it's not like he's out there all the time. I wonder if, you know, depending on, you know, the other two, in my well, in my mind, I feel like Truck Hub or Wheel Hub is such a high entity that I wonder if trucks don't get that shine yet. And you guys have brought that shine, and some other publications surely have, and and Bear Jackson and so on and so forth. But when you know that there's trucks out there that guys like Keith Stevens and even Adele, and there's even some you know obviously the Roacher Shop has some killer trucks. But when you know that the, those trucks are out there and you guys have had trucks in wheel hub. So, so you knew there was a taste of it. And then you're like, you know, I think they just announced that trucks have outsold cars. Now, granted, these are this is 2019, but we're taking, you know, all the trucks that are still around and how popular they are. So it's cool to think that that exposure to you again, 20, 30, 40 years ago as a kid is paying off now. And we're all enjoying that. So I, I met Keith Stevens when I was 20, 21 years, 1987, I think I met, 80, 88, I met Keith Stevens. As a matter of fact, his, I'm not sure if it was the first truck he had. It was one of the first trucks he had was a little Mazda. And I painted that truck. I painted it in my driveway, as a matter of fact. I, good, that's a long time ago. Anyway, that's another story for a different day. Uh, but yeah, um, I was on the phone with Dell today. We're gonna we're gonna run uh, that last truck that he just he just built. That AD truck? Uh, it's uh, what's it a sixty? The blue sixty five. Oh, okay, yeah, 
Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's cool too. Texas, there's obviously trucks. So you guys, you know, obviously you punted to Rodney. Now, you know, Rob, what's your thoughts? Well, I mean, I've always, like I said before, I'm kind of, a, I'm all over the map on stuff. If I had unlimited funds, I'd probably have one of everything in my garage. But, <laughs> so you're um, a normal dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. But I mean, I've always been a big fan of um, F100s and C10s and square bodies and even the OBS trucks I really like. And I remember those in high school and I was like drooling over those. But I mean, a lot of this stuff that I saw, I mean, there was, you know, TV was a big influence to me when I was a kid because you had all of the, you know, the iconic cars that generally you fall guy truck, um, hardcast McCormick and starts. Oh yeah. You were, giving, that stuff. you were, you yeah. were saying that on that post. I knew exactly too, man. Hardcast yeah. McCormick. That, so I mean, it's, there's such a wide range of vehicles in that regard. And, um, and I think that, you know, cars try to me, it doesn't matter. I just, I just love the hobby. I love what people can do to them. Um, and if whatever I can do to help kind of get that out in the world is, you know, huge. I, mean, I, I just love what I do and I love being around the industry. So you guys decide to roll with it. I mean, I think your timing is impeccable and it worked out because there was a void in the market and, um, you know, what was your thoughts? Just follow that recipe. That recipe works. You know, the oatmeal cookies taste phenomenal. You can't keep them on the shelf. Keep that recipe and uh, and run with it. Well, I think Rodney, when he pulled out Truck Hub, I think we kind of wanted to keep the essence of Wheel Hub, but we wanted to give it its own identity as well. So I'm thinking that if, if I'm a guessing man, just for fun, Steven, you're probably the driving force behind Mustang Hub. Rodney, you're the truck hub guy. And then we're just, Rob's just like, I like it all. So I want six <laughs> of everything and it doesn't really matter. It's working out the recipe. I don't know that you're really going to have a different, at least when I look at it, I don't, I don't know that it's any different. Uh, you know, I have a whole slew of questions that I love about Wheel Hub that I hope you incorporate into Truck Hub. Um, the Lamborghini Mura is probably one of my, it's, it's absolutely my favorite read of all of them. Right. I mean, you look at the history cause I like the old school stuff. I like that. It's alive that you found it. And, it's, and then you guys, you know, found that and then you brought it out and you put it into print and we get to see that smell it, taste it, whatever. So I hope that you do that same stuff. If, if it's, if it, if it's a winning formula, you really shouldn't have to change it. The trucks are enough to change. They're, they're, they're different enough. Yeah, you know, you bring up a great point. Um, I think for one of the problems I had for the longest time, that, which always was peculiar in how um, how magazines were always produced in the automotive side, was you had all these niches that were created, and they seemed really arbitrary because, because you know, yeah, you do have guys who are diehard truck guys or diehard Mopar or Chevy or Ford guys or whatnot, but you also have guys that like a little bit of everything, and you'll find that, quite a bit when you go to all the big name builders. I mean, they're, I mean, you might have a guy that, uh, um, that builds like Alan Johnson's a good example. He, he's known for 32 Fords, but he loves VWs. Uh, you go to his shop, he's got all these Vespas. He's got, it, it, it just likes a little bit of everything. And a lot of people are like that. So uh, that's what we wa always wanted to capture with wheel hub. It's like, Hey, anything's fair game. If it's cool, we're going to put in wheel hub. Um, even if it's not a car, which we've done a few times as Motorcycles. well. Motorcycles, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and uh, I kind of feel oh, the same yeah. way with the truck yeah, like, it, Is it like a reader's ride or something like that? Reader's. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you guys have a yeah. book yeah. A magazine. There's no wheels. Okay. But I like it. It's cool. It's different. Yeah. Know? Yeah. That's, uh, you know, actually the, the, the two examples you just brought up, the uh, of all the cars that we featured in Wheel Hub, the ones that keep coming up is, hey, that was my favorite story. One of them is a Lamborghini that comes up all the time. Um, the, uh, the, the Beetle, the Sig Chubbs built, that comes up quite a bit. And also that yacht. And like you said, it's, it's a boat. doesn't have wheels. But it's just one of those things that if you like cars, if you like things that are mechanical, and you look at that, uh, you're going to think it's cool. And, and the yacht company is a car guy. Yeah. 
Well, Steven sent me this, he's, he forwarded this email and he says, you got to check out this guy just subscribed to wheel hub from Turkey. And he says, you're not going to believe what his company does. And I started looking at these yachts and I went, wow. And so anyway, it took us a while to figure out the whole uh, circle between greening auto company and uh, Risa that, that, that owns the yacht company. And, and then we were at Columbus that same year <clears throat> And Jesse had gone to Turkey, and, and oh no, he was, well, where'd they go? They, they flew somewhere. They, Monaco, went to the, they went to Monaco. Yeah, Monaco or something. And so Jesse spent a, a, a few nights on the boat, and he says, dude, you wouldn't believe it. It's like a, it's like a hot rod on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, that boat's built out of wood. It's a wooden boat. <clears throat> it is body worked and painted like a hot rod. He said the interior walls, he goes, I'm looking in closets, I'm looking in corners, I'm looking in the bathrooms, I'm looking everywhere for flaws in this boat. He says there are none. It's finished like a hot rod, but it's the size of a yacht. It's, just, it's incredible. The finish work, the paint work, matte finish paints on the uh, ceiling, glossy finish paints on the walls, it's all color sanded and buffed. He says it's absolutely the most insane thing you've ever seen in your life. And so I guess, I'm not sure if all that came through in the story, but... There's a, you know, that, like Steven said, if you're a hot rod guy, I would have to think that you would find that pretty interesting, you know, even though it's a yacht and not, not a hot rod. And so that was uh, any, any in interesting story like that, or uh, we, we've kind of, our joke is we've kind of knocked the guardrails off of the, off the road on wheel hub. So we're not afraid to, to venture off the, the beaten path to feature whatever. Don't you think too, like, what Steven was saying from the perspective, I think social media has helped with this is, you know, Oh, I'm only a Chevy guy and I'm a, I'm a diehard Chevy guy. I mean, my kids, it's, it, the lineage is passed, but I also think with social media and the cars and everything and the shows and we go, when you see something, you respect it. First and foremost, you respect the work like the beetle. I, I mean, how do you not love it? it's cute. It's, you know, it's got more speakers in it than the yacht and it's a beetle. Um, and it can beat an R8. Yeah, six six chops built it, which he's yeah. as rad as they come. So when you when you put it all together and you look at a beetle, uh, you look at a yacht. It's about craftsmanship. It's about um, you know the the attention to detail. And so I think that ends up being something where maybe it's just you get older and, and you respect so much more about what somebody's doing, and then that kind of goes full circle to the, your ability to display that in a full print. Uh, Ken Diggett's um, feature just for the audience. It's Ken Diggett's, I, I don't know if this is across the board. I really didn't count, but I did count the, the Ken Diggett truck. 20 pages. 20 pages, people. Uh, most, most features are about three, and that might include a centerfold <laughs> or a double <laughs> picture. So, so yeah. three to four, and that's got other stuff in it. So this is 20 freaking pages. And you wouldn't believe what's still on the hard drive that didn't get, I, I never would have dreamed when they told me they wanted to do 20 page features. I said, there's no way you're going to get 20 pages out of one car. That's nearly impossible. Well, we could do 40 on a Ken Diggs truck. We could do 40. There's, there are that many good images there are that many detailed shots. It actually becomes a burden as to what to whittle down to get it down to 20. It's pretty incredible. I, I find it a challenge to try to overwhelm him with images. Yeah, he does a good job of it. Do you ever cuss him out, Rodney? And you're like, really, Rob? Really? The very first time, I, I honestly, I kind of hyperventilated. <laughs> because uh, for every vehicle that Rob shoots, I'll get somewhere between one and two and a half gigs of images. Uh, so that extrapolates somewhere between 75 to, I think I've probably gotten as many as 120 before, images of a car. Well, you can see, even though it's 20 pages, how many images are there? Maybe, maybe 30 or 35, maybe 40 at the most. And so it became a real challenge to figure out what, I mean, I, I really, I was overwhelmed. And it took me a, a few times to figure out, okay, well, we've got 10 engine shots. We've got, you know, however many, 10 overalls or 15 overalls. We've got this many of, of wheel images. We've got you know, eight interior images. So I would start grouping those images together uh, where, I could, where I could just look at interior shots or look at wheel shots or look at engine shots. And, 
you know, honestly, you kind of comb through them. And, and as a car guy, I think this image speaks to me because it shows X, Y, and Z. This image, you know, shows that. So from there, that's how I kind of uh, start assembling a, an article, just finding, grouping those images together, even though there's jillions of them, and finding the ones that speak to me and then, you know, saying these have to stay and then what can we add with it to, to tell the story so that you see the complete vehicle when we're done. Yeah. You have to, and Ronnie, you, you asked like who makes the call, um, and that's uh, that's that's uh, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, the uh, I, I think the best way I can explain it is if you pick up wheel lever truck hub and you just look at it and go, this is pretty unorthodox compared to uh, your typical car magazine, and it's whatever, however un unorthodox it is on the surface, it's like that behind the scenes as well, because um, typically a decision like hey, how many pages is the magazine going to be? How many pages is each article going to be? Which images are going to be used? That's usually a combination of the editor making that call or the managing editor making that call and a combination of both. And so the first couple issues of Wheel Hub, that's kind of how we did it. I set an arbitrary number on, hey, I think this car should be this many pages. And I think we should sequence the cars this way. And, and, and by the, the third issue, I thought, this is really stupid because it's arbitrary. I mean, I'm not the guy laying it out. I'm not the one picking the images. And so how does it make sense for me to put some arbitrary number on it just because that's how it's always been done? So I just told Ronnie, hey, why don't you do this? You know, that's, that's typically... Um, again, something the editor would do, but you know, I don't believe in following some sort of tradition just because that's how it's always been done. I want to do what makes the most sense. What's the most efficient? What's the most effective? What's the best way to do it? And just then that just seemed like, okay, well, this, this should, Rodney should just make the call. So yeah, it's to answer your question, um, all of the above, he, Rodney is making the call on it. And in truck hub, we, we go one step further in truck hub because um, I kind of see truck hub as look me, me and Robert, we were kind of happy doing what we're doing. We could have been happy doing a whole a variety of different genres of magazines, but we also love trucks and, but probably not quite as much as Rodney. So we kind of see truck hub as his baby. And, you know, even though his title is the visual design chief, or you know, he's, he's handling all the, the art direction. He's in a lot of ways uh, assuming some of the role of the editor as well. He, he's picking, you know, because Robert's a content machine. He'll go out and find all kinds of trucks from everywhere. And you're just overwhelmed with everything that he finds. And then you get the images and you don't know what to do with them because there's so many great ones. So that all kind of falls on Roddy. Now he's deciding, okay, here are all these trucks. Um, which ones are we going to put in? How long are we going to make each story? which is uh, pretty unheard of if you were to uh, talk to anyone in publishing and say, yes, the, the, my art director is making all these decisions. Um, they probably think it's pretty bizarre, but it works. And um, I've always kind of felt that, uh, you know, we, uh, I, I see my role as, hey, I, you pick good guys to work with. And then my job is to just, at that point, give them the resources they need to do their job, and then they just get out of their way. Just get out of their way, let them do their job, let them make the, the big decisions. And so that's what we do, it works very well. And then, um, yeah, so a, a lot of uh, what you're seeing um, in terms of uh, what cars go in or what trucks go in and how long are the artic articles, that, that's all on Rodney. Sounds stressful, Rodney, I mean, to think that, uh you know, Rob's loading you up, right? He's loading you up with tons of content and tons of pictures. I assume it probably made life a little easier when Steven said, I don't care, give me however many pictures you want. Because it, I would think if he's saying you can only have this many, then you're like, oh, I got to pick. So it, do, it does sound stressful. It, 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 you know, it's all, they're, they're funneling it to you, especially at least on Truck Hub. C10 Nation, let me tell you about my buddies, Travis, his dad, Jack, AKA dad, and Nick. They run Pro Performance, AZ Pro Performance. They're active in our community. They're C10 guys. They're always working on new stuff, like their new suspension line, React Suspension. 
They're master dealers for Dakota Digital, Bear, Boyd Welding, Vintage Air, and many more. They're C10 specialists and stock many fast-moving products backed by their stellar customer service. Not only do they sell C10 parts, but they live and breathe C10s and are very active in our community. Like I said, look for them at your next truck show. Nick might be there if they let him out, but usually Travis and his dad, Jack, and they want to talk to you and help you out with your C10 project. Follow them on Instagram, Facebook, and you can also check out their Facebook group called C10 Addiction. So check them out and let them know that I sent you. Hey guys, I have Greg Carpet from Dakota Digital on. Greg, why should we choose Dakota Digital? Ronnie, I think we're the best. If you want something that looks cool and fits in the dash, we've got that. If you want something that's going to work with either a 327 or an LS3 or anything in between, we can do that. We've got a ton of direct fit instrument systems for all these pickups. And then we've got some modules that will plug into the computer for your LS, your LT, pull all the info straight out of the computer, put it in the cluster. So it's really the easiest, most functional, most user-friendly package on the market. I agree. And the cool thing is, from the modern perspective of technology, you can even use your phone if you need to. Yeah, our HDX and RTX lines of instrumentation, so our newest platforms we've released, do have a mobile app, and you can put that on your phone or your tablet. So not only speed calibration and color selections and all of the setup parameters can be done on your phone or tablet, you can also run the real-time gauges. So if you're, say, under the hood, working on something, you can have the oil pressure and the coolant temp pulled up so you don't have to run back and forth. So app is really a nice nice upgrade on these. You want the look, you want the performance, and you want to be able to see your gauges, Dakota Digital. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Ronnie. It sounds stressful, Rodney. I mean, to think they're, they're funneling it to you, especially at least on Truck Hub. It's not stressful when you like doing it. And, and you know what's cool about, uh, we haven't had to do it with Truck Hub yet, but it'll happen. It's probably going to happen in the next issue. But uh, with Wheel Hub, I, I can't remember. I think originally it was the first one, one 160 or one, I forgot how many pages it was. Well, yeah, the first one was 160. Yeah, so, well, well, now, I mean, the last Wheel Hub was 196 pages. So what's cool about Wheel Hub, um, we get to a point where we've got a few more advertisers. I complained because I left some really cool images on the cutting floor. And Steven says, well, let's just bump it up to 196. Usually we have to go in 16 page increments the way the, the printer's set up. But how many, how many magazines get to do that? Oh, we're just gonna add 16, we're gonna add 32, or we're gonna add whatever. Yeah, it costs a little more money, but you know you're holding something in your hand when you get it in the mail, for one and hopefully it gives you a lot of good content to mull through, but also it, we, we have the flexibility to add content on a whim because we have X amount of material to put in there. So there, we don't have a lot of the corporate restraints or, I mean, you know, we're not just spending money to spend money, but if it takes another 16 pages to get what we want, then we just add 16 pages and we move on. Well, and it's not just 16 pages. It's, it's a page that you feel like, unfortunately, we're accustomed to. I feel like I'm, I'm missing a page because the page is so thick that I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, is there, is, there, is there, you know, three more pictures that Rob took that I'm not seeing here? So, so you, you lick your, you know, and you try to go like this because the damn pages are so thick. So it's not just 16 pages and it's not 16 pages um, you know, jammed up jelly tight with ads and everything else and, and the freedom and the layout. And so for you guys to say that it's refreshing to say, listen, just add the 16 pages. I'm not going to argue with it. I want it to be that way. And, uh, I'm, for the audience, the ads are sexy. The ads you find yourself, it's like a Super Bowl commercial. You're like, well, we can't leave at halftime. We got to watch all the commercials. The damn ads are rad. I mean, Give me a break. It, you know, the way we looked at it, the ads, ads should be the content as well because they can be. Yeah. So why not integrate it and make it part of the overall look of the book? Well, and, and, and it's funny how many times I've had people like the first probably four issues. Well, there's no ads in here. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're just not looking at it, you know? Cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, actually a lot of the, that credit, uh, I got to credit Rob, Robert for that because, um, when we were putting our beta copy together, 
there obviously weren't ads in it. So we did a couple mock ads and Rodney designed those, but he, he, uh, he had mentioned, Hey, you know, back in the day, I don't know if they still do this. He said back in the day in Chicago, uh, Playboy used to shoot all their own ads. Whoever their clients were, they do the photograph it. They did the creative for the exact reasons we're talking about. So it would look really nice. Uh, blend into the magazine really well and people would pay attention to it. So uh, it just so happened he had a, that great idea. We kind of ran with it. And uh, fortunately, between uh, Robert and Rodney, Ro Robert's images, Rodney's creative uh, on the graphic design side, we have the resources in place where we can do that. So it's worked out very, very well. Do you work with them? You know, the advertisers, do you say we're going to create a new ad for you? Because there's not many ads that uh, don't have the hub flow. I don't really uh, think, I think there's any. Yeah, I think there's, I think we, um, we try to keep like a standard what we want. Um, and if we create, we kind of created a creative business on the side as well to help with doing that. So if somebody doesn't have the resources, wants to be in the magazine, but really can't put something there, don't have the money or don't have the extra budget. And we offer another service for them to help get that and get the look that they, that we want or they want as well. Yeah. I mean, Rod Rodney is very actively involved in that. What will typically happen is sometimes you will have like, as Robert mentioned, some, someone who has, I and mean, we have a lot of advertisers who have never advertised before. They, they'll tell us I've never, there's never been a product out there where I felt it. I, I felt the need to advertise it until I saw yours. So, um, you know, they don't have anything ready to go. They don't have graphics people or images in place to put it together. So in that case, it makes a lot of sense for us to put it together. However, um, at least half of the time, we'll be working with larger companies who have done quite a bit of advertising and they do have stock as ready to go, but they'll say, you know what, we, we'd rather have you do it. it. Just just so, you know, what we have, they won't directly say it's not good enough. They'll just say it, it, just, it just won't fit or flow with your magazine as well as we think it should. And from there, uh, you know, I, I, again, it's, so it, it's, it's another one of uh, uh, Rodney's duties. He, he'll, he'll get to, he gets the, the, um, the list just gets getting longer and longer. Rodney. He gets the opportunity to work with, uh, work with um, our advertisers. And uh, generally they'll, they'll give them a logo and some images and uh, they'll do the rest. One thing I've noticed is that sometimes the ads will be within the feature and they're almost like you don't realize it because it, it could be the same vehicle. Uh, if you, if you, you've trained your eye and you've looked at, you know, issue five, then you're going to see it again in issue eight, but then you kind of, you kind of think, Oh, well that was that feature in that issue. So it seems like you guys are able to use possibly Rob's content and create new ads within because it, it, I don't know how, how to articulate that, but it, it just flows well. And it's like, well, hell, I already saw that, but that's the ad. That's bitching. Mm -hmm. For someone that's, uh, I'll use uh, avant-garde interiors, for example. So for someone who's going to spend uh, a lot of money on an interior, and deservingly so because the amount of work they do is incredible. The, the level of work that they do is unheard of and incredible in, in automobiles and trucks. So uh, if you finish, in fact, I just changed it on this last issue. So when you finish reading the article about the Dutch boys Camaro that won good guys, uh, what it went street machine? Street machine of the year. Yeah. And then the ad is right after that. So for me, it, you know, it's, uh, there's a, there's a identity level, you know, you, when you've just looked at this killer spread and then you, there's the ad of the people who made that possible. If you're the kind of guy that can spend that kind of money on an interior deservedly. So on both ends, um, I think that's good product recognition. It's good. It's good for those guys to immediately be identified with the vehicle that you just looked at. And we do it all the time. We do it with, Ballard transmissions. We do it with uh, BASF and PPG, and I mean, we've just got some great clients that let, let us do that. And I think it's great. Um, it's it's good identity to have those vehicles directly relatable for the for the reader to the article they just read, either before or after, or somewhere in the book. 
it's you know organic it just flows so you don't even you kind of you don't even really realize it you're just like oh yeah that's there oh damn that's who did that and and so that makes it uh it just makes it flow there's a couple things one if for instance when you're watching tv if an annoying commercial comes on you either mute it or if you have it on dvr you skip over it uh and same on a magazine if it's an ugly ad if it's unappealing or if it's offensive you just thumb right over it. You're not going to take the time to look at it. If it's pleasing to look at, then you'll take the time to look at it and enjoy it just like you would the article. And so I think that's, uh, I think that's kind of where we try to, what we try to do with those ads, is to try to uh, make it where, and the other thing too is with wheel hub and with truck hub, I don't think you're going to find a lot of people throwing those in the trash can as soon as they finish reading them. They're going to put them on their coffee table. They're going to put them on their bookshelf. A lot of people give them to other people to look at or the kids or something. And so I tell advertisers all the time, you're not getting just one exposure when that person reads that magazine. It's going to someone else. It's going to be handed to someone else. It's going to be sitting on, a, on someone's table. Another person is going to look. So you get re, repetitive uh, reads out of that out of that, uh, the advertising dollars that you're spending in wheel hub and truck hub. Yeah, yeah most I'll, definitely. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about how, how well the, the ads blend in. We were at a uh, press check, me and Rodney one day. Um, so we'll go to the printer. We'll see the, the pages coming off the printer and we're, we're tweaking the colors. And then, you know, we see an image thought we already corrected. And we're, we're looking at it going, hey, we already fixed the color on this feature. Why is it coming out again? And then we looked at it closer and realized, oh, that's not the feature. That's an ad. That's an ad we put together that, <laughs> that blends in so well with, with the rest of the content. We, we fooled ourselves. We thought that was actually part of the article. Um, so having, I would think if, if it, us having looked at it a million times at that point, if it blends in well to us. We, we hope it does for other people as well. And people are really paying attention to um, the ads that people are spending their hard earned dollars on. You know, we obviously uh, hope you give them your business as well. <laughs> so, Do you have a percentage, you know, this much um, ad to content or you just kind of, how, how do you guys base that off of whether it's wheel hub or truck hub? Um, there isn't a fixed percentage. So uh, typically, um, most car magazines were at a 60 40 ad to edit ratio. So meaning 60% of them would be ads. The highest we've ever gone in wheel up is 21, 22%, but that's not a fixed number. It's more of, it's very uh, unscientific. It's, it's just, we're putting it together. And if Rodney feels like, Hey, you know, I really need more space to, to let these articles breathe. Or if we feel like, that just seems like there are too many ads. Then you know we'll have the talk. Hey, do we need to kick it up another 16 pages? And if we feel like that's the best thing to do, that's what we'll do. Think about this. And the last truck hub was 180 pages. There are uh, so that would mean that you have a solid somewhere between 135 and 140 pages of content. That's not advertising. That's content. So I feel like we're probably 60, 70 pages above the average magazine in content per issue. I just think that the, the way that the recipe works in that you, the, the ads don't feel like ads. So even if it was a 20, 21%, it doesn't feel that way. And, and I don't, I mean, I can't say I don't mean it disrespectfully because it's not nice, but trucking became so much more of, I felt like, um, I was picking up one of those, like a free magazine that you would get when you leave the supermarket and it has so much ad content in it. And a, a guy that grew up on trucking, I have an older brother, uh, you know, hot rod trucking, some of those publications, trucking became so much. I mean, I subscribed to that till the very end and it became so much. I mean, you guys say, you know, we went from 160 to 196. Those magazines were going the opposite way they were going with a lot less quality of paper and and then it was a very high percentage of ads very high percentage so you got to the point where 
I mean, again, I'm still a guy who loves the trucks. I love the scene. I love the read, the backstory. That's why I started the freaking podcast because I wanted more. And, and then I, you know, and I try to support every magazine and I'm looking through that and it just got to be so much repetitive um, advertisements. Whereas even when I'm looking at your book, it doesn't feel that way. And, and, and I, I think you know that, but it's probably good to hear that as well. And for my audience, I'm telling you, man, that the ads are, they're rad ads. They're, they're really, they're, yeah. they're, they're easy on the eye. Thank you. I'm, I mean, we're, we're very well aware. We're definitely not the mo the cheapest, most affordable magazine out there, but the, the benefit of that is that's why only 20 something percent of its ads it's, you know, we felt like, Hey, let's, make the create a product that we like that people actually want to buy and if we can do that then we don't need to fill it up with ads we, we, we can go um directly to the source have the people consuming the product actually pay for it to where you know we're not so dependent on the ads and we don't have to gouge people who do want to advertise well i think if you break it down too and again this is your business but if you think about a quarterly book and if it's 20 bucks, it's 1999, uh, a mag, you're, you're getting, you know, every, you're spending seven bucks a month, right? I mean, Mesa public oh, sure. schools, yeah, math, sure. it's not that's that much different what everybody else is buying, what I'm paying. I mean, you, dude, if you even saw how many freaking magazines are right here, I mean, I, I subscribe to them all because I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. So I think that, I think that what you're getting, you have to say, well, is the value. Now that brings in a whole nother entity. You know, one of the things that I've interviewed quite a few different editors, and one of the things that we always kind of come back to, especially with social media, is there's only 12 cover trucks. There's only 12 covers. Well, there's only four wheel hub. There's only four truck hub. So how hard is that to decide and pick who gets in, who makes the team, and who gets the coveted cover if there's only one? Obviously, with the first initial truck hub, there's two. But uh, that that's probably a fun job too. Rodney, is that another one of your hats? It is. Uh, it's woefully unscientific, <laughs> uh, and you know it's not always the vehicle. It it's uh, it's the images really, and so it's it's like everything else. So well, I'll mock up. Uh, I don't know. I usually mock up four, five, six, sometimes more covers with, with uh, different vehicles or maybe a couple of covers with the same vehicle because Robert captures some really great images. And it's, uh, it's basically just, yeah, I like that. No, I don't like that. And that's really how easy it becomes. It, it's, there's really no scientific method. It's the image. Does it speak? You know, does it look good on the cover? Is that is that something that would catch your eye when you open the envelope and pull out truck hub? Is that something that's going to make your eyebrows raise a little bit when you, when you pull it out? It's really that simple to be honest with you. There's no politics involved in it at all. None. That is exactly what my next question was. Uh, whether it's, whether it's politics, true politics, or whether it's like, dude, come on, you got to get me on the cover. Uh, I feel like respectfully to not only you three from a professional, but the the people that are in the book they're just that, that's i don't know i guess maybe and and i'm probably the guy who'd be like dude you got to put my truck on the cover it's it's probably almost beneath them like they're like it's 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 rad it's going to be in your book it's what almost to the point where your magazine if it's in there it's almost like it's on the cover anyways it doesn't i don't know that it really matters i mean if that makes sense i always said that if you get picked in the grade eight in detroit you've already won Tell that to the guy that got second, but uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, um, no, there, there really, there really isn't a lot of political pressure for, uh, for someone to be on a cover or uh, the pro that that process is really just amongst the three of us, and there's there really is no outside influence involved in it. It really is just the image and how it looks on the cover, and that that's really about it. So, what were your thoughts when you first saw it, Ronnie? Well, I mean, I kind of, I feel like I've eluded that. I, I, I've, I've, I've said, you know, and if I haven't to my listener and to you guys, I mean, how do you say it without saying that it's going to, you're going to stop. Here's what I think. I think you guys need a good bourbon ad and I didn't, I don't remember seeing one, right. I really can't believe there's not a really, really good bourbon ad. 
And it's one of those deals where Rodney said the hoity toity. And it's like, I just want to have a glass of bourbon and, and, and just sit down and you just, you just want to have like, or maybe in the morning, a really good cup of coffee and, and maybe actually the whole damn day, maybe a bourbon in the morning to go over a few pages, a few features, and then, and then maybe a bourbon later and look at the whole thing. But I feel like it's one of those things. And again, I don't mean this disrespectfully to all these other magazines because I enjoy them all, but it doesn't, it's something that I get. I look through it, boom, I throw it in my bag. I take it to work. You know, I'm laying down. This is something that makes you really kind of like a good movie, you know, or like a good book or something like that, where you really just want to, you're, you're investing your time. And that's why I kind of think when you say, well, it might cost a little more, but what it gives you is it, it almost can give you three months. And the other thing that I find out not only about truck hub, but wheel hub is you go back you don't just you don't just read it once it's somewhat intoxicating the 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 print the what you're able to capture i really like the guest features where you guys are allowing the other guys to come in and do do an article um you know jonathan ward uh, eric black those those features i you know, one of my questions is are you going to do that with truck hub and i think that that's that's the other entity it's where you're like okay i'm getting to know more about this person or this build the duster article is probably my favorite i really liked that car casper i i remember seeing it at sema mm -hmm. i like the lamborghini the whole thing but i really dig the duster i love her story and how you guys were able to capture it and i think that that's what for the audience whether it's wheel hub or truck hub you have to understand that it's it's more than just three or four pictures. It's a lot more. Yeah, we have. I mean, our we'll probably will have industry stories and artists and maybe some photographers here and there because we've we 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 started out doing some photographers and then we've been concentrating a lot of um, designers lately. I, I kind of want to get back a little bit to bring in a guest photographer here and there on occasion. Um, I mean, I know a couple of guys that are strictly they. That's pretty much ninety percent what they do is just trucks and some really good photographers out there. Yeah, like we have an upcoming story with Kevin Tetz with his C10 he just finished and he wrote the story. We have it written from his perspective too. So I think that'll be kind of interesting to, to have a build be discussed and have it laid out from the builder's perspective. You know, another thing too was you guys had Stacy in, you know, and that's a cool thing. You, you think about the lineage of of Kevin and then Stacy uh -huh. and and just and I've had, you know, been fortunate enough to have Stacy on the pod, but that's what it's all about. It's about whether it's a pod, whether it's a book, but I do think that there's some a good tie in there that your guys are going deeper than a normal magazine will, whether that's even through a word, a verbiage, a layout or a picture. It's mm -hmm. deeper, and that's exactly what it is. I think we strive as humans to – you're attracted to, let's just say, the hot chick, okay, the hot woman. Well, this is the real nice house. This is the real you, – you've taken the, the next level, and I actually think you probably jumped a few levels. And what you've done is, is you've made it available for $20. And, yeah. and I think that it's – in today's world – People's money mean a lot, right? I mean, it, nobody just takes it for granted, but it's without a doubt, it's worth every penny. But I think a lot of it's driven by our individual passions too. I mean, I, I've, I haven't enjoyed my craft in, I mean, I've, when I was working in studios and then, and, and I, I, I cherish the time I spent working with everybody at 10 um that was a lot of the best years that i've had in my career but towards the end of that i was starting to feel like a lot of it was getting my stuff was feeling like i was getting watered down i was trying to produce so much and they and there, i was kind of having some creative issues with i wanted to do more but the amount of time i was spending was you know wasn't it, it wasn't getting through and I really, I really wanted to push myself further, and um, I've really enjoyed watching Stephen grow. His writing is, to me, has gotten better and better and better, and I feel like I've grown a lot in the last three years 
doing what I've been doing. Um, and Rodney blows my mind every time. I mean, when you post a, you painted your wife's purse, another wife's purse for her birthday this year. And it's just like the stuff that he comes out of his head, you know, unrelated to the magazine. It just, it just boggles my mind. The talent that is in that brain of his. And it's, it's truly been an honor to be able to work with these guys and to be able to produce something like this. And like you said, I can't tell you how many times I've been told that, you know, I've read this thing three or four different times I mean, between wheel hub and I know truck hubs just come out, but um, I have a lot of people calling me up or, or will tell me when I go on a shoot and says, like, I really enjoyed that last one. I've read it four times, you know, I've passed with this person. And, and to me, I, that's just, that's, worth every every ounce of energy we've put into it i feel like in a world that's moving faster every single second this slows you down yeah like you say about the 20 to 30 pictures that are all at the right angle and the right lighting is it is it makes your brain just slow down take a deep breath it's you know dropping some dopamine when you're looking at it it's exhilarating and that's what I'm saying. You just want to have a, a real nice, you know, fresh glass of scotch or a bourbon or a coffee or a beer. And you just want to look at it. And it is a piece of art. Do you feel like between the three of you, because you're, you're always, you're respecting one another and you're challenging one another, you guys are continuing to, to grow and push one another and you don't even realize it? Um, yeah, I, I would say so. In, in a lot of ways, um, I, I think that's just how we're hardwired. Even if we don't um, you know, go out of our way to uh, you know explicitly push each other, it's just you know the uh, it, it's when you see the images coming in from Robert or, or the layout coming in from Rodney, and is that much better than what was in the last issue, then. It, it makes everyone want to do a better job. It's whatever my role is, I want to do. I, I, you, you definitely don't want to be the weakest link. So you want to, uh, whatever your, contribu your own personal contribution is, uh, you, you want it to stack up favorably to what they're doing. So yeah, I guess in, 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 in to, I guess it's, it's indirectly in some ways answers your question. But yeah, I, th I think in that way, we, we definitely do uh, continue to push each other. And, oh, I got I got a pretty good example of that actually because I mean when I was in Boston shooting Chris Searcy's truck, um, I would usually when I'm on a shoot I'll uh, camera angle or I'll take the back I'll take a photo of the back of the camera with my iPhone and send those guys just kind of you know see if they like what they're seeing so far or whatever and and like when I was shooting Chris's truck Rodney kind of like hey can you do this kind of an angle and then sent me a picture of like the type of angle he was looking for. Maybe that's not something I would visually had seen at the point. And then, you know, it kind of makes, then it kind of makes me think about doing, you know, looking at something a little bit differently next time I go out. So, yeah, and I think there's a lot of ways he, Rodney will kind of push me in that direction too. Or he'll, he'll ask, every once in a while, he'll ask for something very specific in terms of what he wants for a photo and I'll do my best to pull it off. So I think, and that actually helps me a lot because, um, it kind of pushes me now I've been kind of stuck. I, I've noticed myself, I've been kind of stuck in a, in a rut in terms of framing pictures and how I've got it composed in the magazine or in the, in the frame. And I a lot of people, I don't know if people know this about me, but I, I love to do like landscape nature photography. And I've kind of been really pushing myself on my off time to do a lot more of that, which has helped me, in the magazine plus i'm looking at some of my peers work and looking at okay they're framing it this way and incorporating it this way and i try to take a lot of what i've learned through some of the landscape stuff that i've done back into this and try to try to make an overall instead of just an image about a truck or a car then i'm trying to like put it in context to this environment and and that a lot of comes off that i mean to me that's been kind of a push into creativity as well and then like I said, Rodney will sometimes feed me an idea or something he would like to see. Now, Steven will do the same thing. I mean, he came up with a pretty clever ad idea for social media ad. And I spent Sunday afternoon working on that. So, One of the thoughts is you're not just picking like the random parking lot when you shoot these vehicles either. So the, the warehouse, the background is, is just as sometimes as nice as what we're looking at. 
walk us through that when you when you pick a shoot uh or or when you because you're traveling all over i mean i've talked to right. you we've we've talked and it's like yeah. oh i'm i'm here I'm, I'm in i'm in texas i'm in florida i'm in boston i'm here i'm all over the country how are you lining up not only you know, not necessarily the the shoots but you know the background and are you relying on the the builder and or the owner to say yeah this is the best spot sometimes the builder will have a place that they've either been to before or they know of hey i've got this buddy's name and like greening the greening shoot um with greening and goolsby with cat because we shot the maverick and casper in the same building but they were on opposite sides of the building so like one building was one side of the building was completely just decrepit and was water over the place and the other side was dry and it had a completely different look and it it was an old um, dairy that is in Jesse's town and he knew the guy that owned the building and they had, I mean, it had no windows in it and it was not, it was, it was just completely open to the elements, but it was the raddest place I think I've been in a while. And um, I mean, we get lucky sometimes, sometimes, you know, I, I, if I've been to a certain place, I'll know where things are. And, um, and there are certain places where I really struggle, but, you know, it's, it's depending on the environment you're in. Some of the smaller towns have really cool places that can go. Um, in fact, I was just down near Atlanta and the builder I was with, one of his guys knows of this old brick factory that has these massive brick kilns that they used to build all, make all the bricks for building houses and stuff. And it was just like this old, they don't use any of it anymore. And it was just some of the really cool backgrounds that I had and it was all overgrown and some old buildings and it was just really cool. And sometimes I get lucky and sometimes I have to really work for it. Sometimes I don't have much of a background, but um, I, I, what I tend to do is when I get there, I try to get there early enough in the day where I can spend some time with the owner can kind of, or the builder can kind of like, Hey, we, let's go drive around. We have some areas that we thought of and we'll go look at those and then make some decisions from there. And it's just kind of how it works. Sometimes I, some guys will have a specific place they want. I've had guys say, I've got to go here. So we just make it work. So. Cool. Yeah, it definitely does work. And I, I think that you guys are taking that it's visually uh, appealing because it looks like you're taking that extra step to not only feature the the vehicle itself, but the shoot and and you're spending that extra time so that kind of matches um i got a few more and then i'll let you go because you know we've already kind of beat it up that you guys are really busy so i do appreciate your time give me like maybe one of your favorites that you've done so far whether it's a truck whether it's a wheel whatever or even a mustang give me a feature that that you know you got the pictures rodney from rob or Steven, you wrote it or just when you look back, you guys have got, you know, two years a wheel, you've got one truck, you've got the Mustang. Give me something where you're like, this blew my freaking, this blew me away. And this is, this is my favorite so far from, a, from whatever perspective. Honestly, uh, it, it's at the printer right now. It should be printed the next wheel hub. And Robert caught some outrageous images of a Mercury out in California. And um, there's just, uh, I don't know, there's nothing, uh, nothing, I mean, there was no lightning storm or tornado in the background or UFOs. It was, it was just the, the sky was just right. The, the palm trees were just right. I mean, when you think of a Mercury in California, this, these images, is this what comes into my head that the, the the, the groovy purple pinkish cast of the sky and the, I mean, it was just a, it was just a really cool shoot. I really, I really like those images. I keep, I found myself going back and looking at those images even after the, the layout was done. That makes me think of another reason why I like it is, 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 and I think your audience and the subscribers and everybody likes it is, is, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. And when we think about how it slows us down, there is no word there. There's just the picture, but you, you tend to just sit there and think, my God, look at the work that's been done here. If, yeah, if folks only knew how much work was, was in there to capture that image too. I mean, there, there are uh, the lighting, the timing, you know, all the, most of those images are not shot at uh, high noon as soon as you eat lunch and you're raring to go. A lot of that's at dawn or at dusk. 
Uh, some of it's shot when it's so dark, you think, how is this going to work out? I remember sitting out at, when we did, uh, uh, Pinky's built the, uh, the little roadster, that, that kind of uh, copper and black looking uh, roadster that he did. I mean, we were, we were outside of his, uh, his shop at the fairgrounds where they had the good guys event at what six o'clock in the morning freezing but cold i mean freezing cold the sun coming up over the mountains and and i'm i'm sitting there thinking how is this ever going to turn out it's too dark and then you see the images and you think wow that's why you're taking the pictures and i'm just <laughs> you're in the in the nice office working your ass off wearing uh five different hats and picking the, uh, picking the top 30 picks. Steven, do you have a, do you have a, an article or a feature that, that really resonates with you? Uh, to me, I mean, you mentioned one of them, the one with, that we did with Stacy David, the, the other one, um, would probably be in the very first issue that the same shoot that Rodney was talking about when we were at Eric Pratt shop and we did the article on him and his brewery. Um, I mean, those two stand out for me just because they're such interesting people. Um, and it's, you, you talk to them, you get to know them, you just kind of get a feel for how they're wired and, you know, building hot rods is just part of what they do. I mean, it's, they could have been, th those are guys who could have been successful doing anything. They just happened to build hot rods or they happened to have a brewery and we're just really fortunate that that's what they decided to do. And that's why we get to enjoy the cars that they build. Uh, I always kind of uh, think of, I think the simplest way I can describe what we do is all we're trying to do is recreate the experience of seeing these cars up close and personal because we're really lucky i mean we get a all access pass to see these cars up close in ways other people can't it's not at a show with 50 other people around it or roped off I and mean, we get to see them up close we get to sit in them we get to look underneath them and most people don't i mean most people won't even see them in person so all we're trying to do is capture what we're experiencing and put in the magazine so other people uh can't can even you know, enjoy it the same way or as close to the same way as we can. Very cool. Yeah, for sure. Rob, what do you got? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I still think probably one of my probably more favorite ones. Um, I mean, I, there's been some that I've done lately that I just really, really love. I think one of them was the Miranda built Camaro that I did in um, wheel hub. Um, we just found this really crazy location not far from the shop and I mean to me that's probably one of the nicest 69 cameras I've ever seen and that car was just a, just a, so much fun to shoot and I think out on the truck side I think probably and I've done quite a few of them over the years but I think Kindig's truck is probably my favorite so far Justin over there he's one of the guys that helps or does all the final assembly and stuff and he's usually on the shoots with me and he happened to find this Harley Davidson dealership just outside of town and it was just the coolest thing I've ever seen um, and it just worked really well and I got the extra bonus of having some snow in the background in the mountains and I've always wanted to shoot one of these cars in snow <laughs> and uh, yeah I, I just yeah I think those are probably my two favorite right now yeah I love it the guy who says you know there's only time so many times you can shoot a 69 Camaro and that's one of his favorites so yeah well, that one but that that I mean, car that car is I mean it's absolutely stunning and yeah. um I'm sure you guys have all been to good guy Scottsdale but every time I look at the Ken Diggett shot it I feel like I'm looking at Scottsdale but then I see the Harley Davidson because there's a few things at Westworld where it's at it kind of right. has some of that I, I I'm going to say the same architect must have been involved or something like that because they're they're kind of eerie similar um all right so so what are we what are we going to look forward to here you know with truck hub some of the the things like i said you've got some of the featured guests you've got uh some of the the in-depth you know like with the lamborghini um what are you guys thinking so for our audience you know we're encouraging you to go out buy this subscribe what uh, what do we have to look forward to with with truck hub well, I think in my mind, and I think we've all discussed this too, I don't think that with a truck book, I don't think there's any one genre we're going to stick to. Um, like with Wheelhub, we kind of stick to, we know muscle cars, and we know hot rods, and then anything else is kind of fair game from that point. 
So we try to keep that in there. And I think we're looking at this as more of like a kind of a classic trucks book up to, you know, a certain point, maybe the OBS era. And then after that'd be a late model, but I'm not opposed to doing an import or lifted truck or, you know, overlanding vehicles of some kind, or if it's just, you know, I've got a, I've got a actually line on a, um, a photographer up in Washington state. He um, has recently purchased a, a new Colorado ZR2, but he's outfitted for overlanding because he's a landscape photographer. He has a user channel. He's got a big following. And I had this idea of kind of doing a review with him and going out with him shooting and kind of putting a truck through his paces and then, you know, and how he's built it out to meet his needs kind of thing. Um, I mean, I, to me, I think it's kind of like, it's open-ended. We kind of like Rodney said, we take the guardrails off and whatever we, you know, just kind of come up with some cool stuff. And there's really cool imports and stuff out there. You know, you guys did a really good job uh, of selecting the variety is abundant in the first one. Uh, obviously, uh, Mark Jimbabwe's C10 that he built is my—it's without a doubt. I mean, it's not a secret to anybody that it's my favorite C10. Yeah. I was very excited for him to uh, to get the cover. He deserved that, and um, it's it's a beautiful truck. I love the truck. I love pretty much everything that dude builds. So I think that you know that's that's a refreshing thing. And it and again, in a world of C10s or a sea of C10s, I've been told before, it's refreshing to see a Studebaker, you know, a, a Ford. Uh, a Jeep, a Toyota, and there's really cool trucks out there. When you think about everything that's, you know, icon, you think about some of the stuff, the FJs, and uh, there, there's a plethora of rad vehicles out there. There's an amazing amount of rad builders, and, and I'm glad to see you guys are going to, you know, capture that. With it being kind of your baby, Rodney, what do you envision? Do you have anything that you'd like to see, you know, uh, as the future kind of evolves with Truck Hub? I, you know, nothing in particular. Um, just it would be like everything else. The guardrails will be off. So if uh, if it's something outrageous or different, then we're not afraid to run it. And one of my uh, one of my friends here just uh, reacquired a. Uh, it's owned by Don Smith in Dallas, but it's a 32, uh, 32 all steel original 32 pickup. So it'll be coming up. Um, I think we've talked about a little bit about some of that, uh, Overland type, uh, features. I, I don't know, just a little bit of everything. We've got some really cool stuff coming up in wheel hub too. We've got a, a, something that you've never, ever seen before happen in a magazine coming up with Eric Black, probably going to happen next year. It got put off because of the bat virus, but that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> Um, I mean, we've got some really cool stuff coming down the pike, some really unusual builds and uh, stories and, you know, it, Wheel Hub and Truck Hub both, um, they're just, uh, it, it's kind of like when I was painting cars, you know, they're, it, I used to tell people, it doesn't matter what somebody paid for a paint job, you don't get to run along beside the vehicle and say, well, the reason this looks like this is because we ran out of time, or the reason this flaw is here is because uh, they didn't have the money or, you know, it, it is what it is. When you, when you pulled it out at a show or wherever it, it speaks for itself. And so I think wheel hub and truck hub both have been, and will continue to be that way. There's, there's really no hiding it. The content is what the content is and the quality is what it is. And it's just bring everything you got with every issue. So there's no hiding it, but there's really nothing to hide from the reader's perspective. <laughs> just, just so you know. So what I'm seeing, Stephen, what do you think? What what are you looking forward to in the uh, in the future with Truck Hub? Uh, a lot of what the other guys have said. I mean, there there is just such a great variety right now of uh, trucks being built. That um, you know, Robert was out here in Texas about a month ago. I think in a week he got five or six just Seven. pretty spectacular trucks. Uh, so um, <laughs> you know, it's in that sense it can be overwhelming there's just so much cool stuff out there like how do we like fit it all in um so you know from from that sense i just kind of look forward to doing as good of a job as we can to, to give as much, many people the credit they deserve i mean your buddy mark is a good example it's um yeah I, we completely agree he deserved the cover which is why he was on the cover and he's got a another pretty badass one that we're going to go shoot pretty soon uh, so, so uh, you know the 
Yeah, I think one of the most rewarding things for me is there are, whether it's on the truck side or even on the wheel up side, there's so many, so much great uh, up and coming talent that um, I guess in some ways maybe they're, they're not even up and coming, but they haven't quite gotten the, uh, the recognition that they deserve. So, I mean, Truck Hub just gives us another outlet to um, give those guys credit, let the world see what they're doing. Um, because that, that was largely why we started Wheel Up. It was just a shame that, you know, me and Robert, we'd go out and we'd see these amazing cars and then we see how they're presented and we'd have to tell people, no, you don't understand how nice these things really are. You just can't tell looking at those three or four pages. So, I mean, all we're trying to do is uh, put out a product um, that that's just just shows what the builders are doing. That, that's that's all we got to do is is you know they're between them and their customers are spending all kinds of money, you know, thousands of hours on these cars and trucks, and we just need to show people what they're doing, keep people excited about building cars and trucks and hot rods, so we keep this whole thing going, and we don't have to ever work real jobs, and just keep doing this. Cool. I hope so too, and and I'm glad that you uh, that you three found one another. How is the subscription? How's it going? Are you guys, is it, is it going well? Is it well received? Do you, are you happy? Oh, with, with truck it has been phenomenal. Uh, um, what's helped us tremendously is that, you know, with being that we'd have already done a wheel hub, we had this existing, very loyal uh, customer base. Um, you know, a lot of those guys were just chomping on the bit for a truck magazine. So as soon as it came out, I mean, it was, it was just gangbuster. So, um, it's if if I look at where we're at now with Truck Hub, I mean we we it's been less than two months since we even announced Truck Hub. It, it's been out in the wild for five weeks, four or five weeks, and um, you know we're already at it. It took Wheel Hub um, we, about a year to get to where Truck Hub is at right now. So it's been very, very well received. And uh, like, like, like you said, and Rodney said, and uh, you know, the, the market is just so hot that uh, we just hope to uh, uh, give people what they want, give them a product that they really want and deserve and enjoy. Okay, so uh, they can get online. Uh, let's see here, is it just wheelhub.com? We, so for Wheel Hub, it's Wheel Hub Mag, M-A-G, wheelhubmag.com. And for Truck Hub, it's Truck Hub, Truck Hub at mag.com. And uh, it's for one-year subscription. Um, how much is it for the one year? One year is 65. Uh, mm -hmm. But for you know, people listening to your show, they can use uh, discount code C10 and get 20% off. Wow. All right. There you go. There you go. So, so you can get a discount, you can subscribe, get 20% off. So, I mean, again, doing my Mesa public schools, six times two, 12, carry the five, 55 bucks. Let's just look at it that way. You're getting a, a one year subscription. You're getting uh, four magazines delivered to your four books. Really. Uh, it's kind of a coffee table uh, publication. It's something that you will not regret and if you do, you can, uh, you know, reach out to me and I'll give you a money back guarantee. I won't, but I'll say that for a lot because uh, <laughs> I'll hit them up. Um, awesome, guys. I, I, again, I can't thank you enough for your time. And, and I don't even just mean that for your time today. If it wasn't for enthusiasts like yourselves and people that are passionate that can create such amazing, you know, material, uh, then print would, you know, be on life support. And, and I don't think that it is. And I think that you've you've rejuvenated it and you've given it um, another outlet. And I think that's probably got to be something very, something that just feels so warm in the sense that you, you know, you're like, well, we only have wheel hub now. Well, now we can release more content with Mustang and truck and we can, we can, we can make more people's days and we can make more builders days. And, and I just want to see that bourbon uh, ad in there. And, uh, and I'm in, I'm in. So thank you guys for your time. All right, guys, uh, that's it for Wheel Hub and uh, Truck Hub and the boys. We're out. Appreciate it. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks for having us on.